Good morning all, good afternoon, good evening. Today I want to riff on a common theme that can show up with people that are experiencing some kind of awakening. It's also a common theme that shows up with people that are experiencing psychosis. And you know, sometimes psychosis is awakening, sometimes it's not, sometimes they interrelate. But I wanted to speak to this particular um, experience of reality that can begin to arise. And it's one that I experienced when I was going through Kundalini awakening slash psychosis. And people write to me all the time. I get a lot of emails and messages from people going through awakenings, of course, because of these videos and because of the articles on my website. Um, so the phenomenon that I want to uh, look at today is a phenom phenomenon that begins to occur where all of a sudden it feels like there are synchronicities everywhere. It feels as if the divine, like God, is speaking to you, to us, um, through songs or through the television or through the newspaper. It feels as if there are hidden messages everywhere. Um, it can feel as if other people are acting in unison. Um, you know, they, like they're, for example, maybe they're all trying to capture you or maybe they're all trying to um, test you in some way but there's a sense of, of others acting in unison. It can begin to feel as if life itself is this one big orchestrated scenario like almost as if there was you know God has these invisible puppet strings it feels like everything is being managed or controlled or manipulated um, and that can feel both in, in a blissful, awesome, great way, or it can feel like in a scary kind of way that leads to anxiety, fear, or paranoia. It can be perceived in different ways. Um, there can be a sense of like constantly being watched, feeling as if you're always being watched. And so these, mm, this phenomena, right? Here's my theory, let's call it a theory, of what is actually going on. Right, and it's based on my understandings of the traditional tantric teachings, okay, and also my own direct experience, and like I said, the people I've worked with and mentored, and a lot of the emails and messages that I receive. So the, the traditional tantric teachings point to life being this continuity, that there is one underlying sort of substratum that gives rise to life itself. And in the tantric teachings, this is Shiva, Right? Not Shiva as a person, not Shiva as a man, you know, not even Shiva as a god per se, but Shiva as awareness, as consciousness, right? That then embodies through the physical material realm, which is sometimes called Shakti, which is not Shakti as woman, not even Shakti as goddess so much, but, but Shakti as energy that becomes physical material matter. And so reality itself is seen as this alive presence that we are in co-creation with that we are in conversation with and this is one reason for kirtan if you've ever done kirtan it's call and response call and response call and response call and response and this is mimicking the underlying nature of reality which is call and response call and response right and so my sense is that when people begin to their perceptual abilities expand and they begin to perceive the nature of reality directly of the sense of continuity of call and response um, this sense that life itself is watching us or acting for us or interacting with us or speaking with us which is a traditional tantric teaching right and you can directly experience that now when people who have none of those teachings and none of that context begin to perceive, so have a direct experience of that underlying nature of reality, what happens is that they then filter that direct perception that they are having through their conditioning, right? And most of the time, I'd say probably 99.99999% of the time, those people are still identified with the story of me, the individual sense of self, right? And that's something that begins to loosen as you do practice, as you learn the teachings, as you align to the path. But when the, that sense of individual self is still really strong, I, me, my, then the sense of life as continuity is filtered through that. And so all of a sudden it's corrupting, and you could say, 
what is a true felt sense of the nature of reality. And then people will think that, you know, the hidden messages and people acting in unison and that sort of orchestrated scenario, etc. It's all filtered through the me, my, I, and whatever's in the, in the system, right, of the person will influence how that is experienced. So if someone has a lot of fear, a lot of unconscious fear, um, if someone is carrying a belief that life people are out to get me, for example, or I can't trust life, or life is really hard. If someone has all of those beliefs and they start to feel the underlying continuity of reality, it all gets filtered through that and all of a sudden they're seeing conspiracies and they get paranoid and they feel like people are out to attack them, etc. Right? And so what's going on then is both someone's awakening to a level of truth, the underlying nature of reality, but they don't have the teachings, they don't have the context, and they haven't done enough practice, etc., to be able to shift their own conditioning so their own conditioning filters what is happening. Okay? So that is my theory of what's unfolding there. Now, if that is you, if you if you've had that experience, how do you work with it skillfully? Right? That's the question. How to how to make sense of it in a way that's not crazy as such, okay? And one is to realize that, yeah, there is a teaching within the traditional tantric lineage that says life is happening for us. Like whatever's unfolding is for our benefit in some way. If we know how to see, discern correctly what is unfolding and how to respond to it skillfully, right? Um, so... Let me just take a breath here and feel into this. What's really, really beneficial when you start to feel that underlying continuity of reality, when it feels as if life is speaking to you, God is speaking to you, when it feels as if you're getting divine messages or, you know, etc., is to always, always, always stay in a state of detachment and curiosity and not knowing. So don't believe the thoughts that might be coming up in your head. Don't attach and believe the hidden messages you might be getting because those messages will be informed so much by your conditioning and that's where they get corrupted. Instead, just be really, really curious and be in a state of wonder. Huh, I wonder if that's true. I wonder if it would be beneficial to take on board that message that I feel like I'm getting um, and it can be really useful then to touch base with a trusted friend or colleague or mentor or peer and just say hey I feel as if life is telling me this because I feel as if I'm seeing this everywhere right but I'm not a hundred percent sure of what's going on and just get feedback right be very be very discerning in who you choose to speak to that's that's critical that's important um, Okay, just tuning in to see. Yeah, so from a traditional tantric perspective, there is an underlying pattern to reality that is constantly flowing, that is constantly unfolding. And that's a part of it as well. This is a continuity and this is a pattern. And when our perceptual abilities begin to open up, we can, we can, we can feel that. We can feel the pattern. We can, we can kind of sense it. And of course, like I just said, if we're still really attached to our individual sense of self, the story of me, and we still have a whole lot of conditioning and a whole lot of beliefs running, and we have no context or framework for working with the pattern in a skillful way, we'll misinterpret, we'll misunderstand, we'll misdiagnose what we're perceiving and how to work with it, you see. Okay, so is God talking to you? Maybe, maybe not, right? Is the world talking to you? Maybe, maybe not. Stay in that. 
Um, for me, one of the most beneficial things I did on the path was A, find a lineage, Trika Shaivism, that really spoke to me, that I could deeply commit to, that I could learn the teachings and learn the practices as a way of creating a strong container that could hold the awakening and then the integration process that I was going through. Because I could check against those teachings, I could check against those teachers, and then I could see if I was going into delusion or illusion, right? Um, so that was really beneficial. The other thing I did was I, I took a strong vow, like prayer for pure motive. May I practice out of love for myself. May I practice out of a desire to know the truth. May I practice for the well-being of all beings. And aligning in that way has helped to keep me safe as such because my number one orientation to reality is love, truth, and the well-being of all. So if I... You know, instead of going on some trip because I think I see some hidden message somewhere and it could lead to me harming someone, which is what happens sometimes. You know, like people read into shit and, and they're having an awakening experience and they believe the thing and they take an action that harms themselves or others, right? But when there's an alignment to the well being of all, that's like a safeguard and it stops you from moving in that direction as such. So, that's my theory on what is actually going on when people are going through awakening and psychosis and they start to see hidden messages in the divine everywhere and, the, and they feel as if they're being spoken to through media, whatever it might be, is that those people are simply feeling the underlying continuity of reality, right, which is always in communication with us. It's always in communication with us. However, they're seeing it through the filter of still being attached to an, identical, um, an individual identity, and they're seeing it through the filter of all of their conditioning, right? And that's when it becomes problematic. So, do your work, do your practices, find good teachers, find good lineages, go for the traditional ones that are very, you know, like these guys, they, they did the biz, you know, Abhinava Gupta a thousand years ago, Shamaraja a thousand years ago, writing the text, they, they are describing the awakening journey from the inside out as they are living it in a very grounded, centered way. Seek out those teachings. All right, my name's Karalea. Um, drop a message down below if you've had this experience, if you've got any thoughts on this experiences, on this experience, and if you have any questions on this experience, drop it down below. All right, big love to you all.